past few days, we've taken a look at my early door predictions for Euro 2020 at the group stage level. But today, we're going to take a little look at the 16 nations that I feel will make it through to those knockout stages. And again, ultimately, who is going to win out Euro 2020? We'll take a little look at it next. Right, folks, back with another prediction show today. We're taking a look at the Euro 2020 knockout stages, and we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new to the channel, smash your subscribe button. Give me banger today with all things Euro 2020. Papa Nova's related. Whoa, football related. We got it all here. Under Waruski. That's right, of course. Euro 2020 is still a few months away, but of course, I want to get my early door picks out there uh, to showcase what I think will happen, and maybe just maybe it comes uh, to fruition when the, kit, the tournament kicks off out in the summer. Uh, but before that, one big, big shout out, of course, to the Patrons, support the channel behind the scenes. I do appreciate that, guys. Um, uh, you are the ones that kick, kick start the, the channel behind the scenes and get me up to another level. So I do appreciate that support. Uh, if anyone else is out there wants to support the channel in another way, you can also check out the link down below, patreon.com forward slash Rovercees. And again, check out the other links, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, all that in there. Uh, so make sure you can follow me on the bloody go. So without further ado, let's jump into it, of course. Yeah, the past uh, six days, I think, we've done groups A all the way through to F. And if you've been following it, you'll know who comes first, who comes second. Again, ultimately, who comes third. But you don't know who of those six uh, nations uh, have made it through as um, uh, the best of those third-place teams. So here we go. Here are those those nations that have qualified, in my eyes, according to my picks, as uh, the best third-place nations. So there could only be four, I believe. Uh, and here we go. So uh, Wales finished in, uh, in, in third out in Group A with three points. Denmark got themselves four. Austria got themselves four as well. Uh, Scotland got themselves three. Sweden, four. And Portugal got five points as well so ultimately uh wales and scotland are going home in my eyes and that's just from my picks of course you guys got your own picks of course and we can see who who's the ultimate king at the end of it we will be covering euro 20, 2020 in extensive coverage uh, right here in fact over the next few days we'll still have some more content uh, coming at you in regards to this. So we'll put this into the accumulator and this is what we've got. So we're going to kick it all off with the 16 nations uh, and then of course paired up with their respective matches in the knockout stages. We've got Belgium up against Portugal. We have Italy uh, taking on Ukraine. Uh, the French uh, of course World Cup winners taking on Denmark. Former Euro winners of course Croatia World Cup finalists up against Dark Horses Poland. On the other side of the bracket we have Spain of course uh, recently smashed Germany in the Nations League taking on Austria. We have England up against Germany. Wow, wow, we will. Get that in your face. So that's what we're talking about. That's going to be an exciting little counter if it all goes well. Netherlands up against the Swedes uh, and Switzerland up against Russia. You would think on this, when you look at the bracket, the, the way it's laid out here, uh, the Netherlands have a good shot to get to at least the semi-finals. And then uh, well, Spain and England and Germany have a good all to do. So it could be said for the French. They probably got a, a nice pathway to the finals, but we'll have to wait and see, of course. Okay then, folks, so let's kick it all off with Belgium. And to make matters uh, much more easy and better on the eye, I've moved to the middle here. Uh, so kick it off with Belgium up against Portugal. Portugal. Now, Belgium coming into this, of course, out of Group B in the Euro 2020s, taking on uh, Portugal, uh, who came out of Group F. And according to my knowledge, I don't know uh, how does this pan out. So they came the winner of Group B. So they would have been the third place team out in Group uh, F. Because, of course, if you take a look at the breakdown, it's very complicated to get to this stage. You have to get the old calculators out and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, Portugal come into this, of course, uh, FIFA ranking of five in the world at the moment. Of course, the European champions trying to defend their title. Up against the Belgians, of course, who are ranked officially number one in the world. Uh, to be honest with you, it's going to be a very, very good game if it pans out this way. And I'll be looking forward to it. But I do expect, ultimately, Cream will rise to the top. And I think... I think Ronaldo's had his day in regards to international glory. I don't think he'll get anything else for the Nations League. And, of course, European Czech 2020, 2016 was a, a glorious year for him. But it will be the Belgians who come out on top of this one uh, to move through to the quarterfinals, I think. Is it the quarterfinals? Uh, the last eight, anyway. Next up, we have the Italy against the Ukraine. Uh, Italy, of course, coming into this. Uh, where are they coming out of this? They're weary winner of Group A. Uh, and, of course, Ukraine, I think, will be runners-up out in Group C. Italy coming at you, of course, a ranking of 12th in the world. But they're looking good at the moment. They're looking like they've... They've got their shit together. Up against the Ukrainians, I guess. Uh, just a difficult side, of course. Uh, uh, actually, are they managed by Shevchenko? Of course, Legion legend, uh, Ukrainian legend, Andriy Shevchenko, of course, uh, the, the man pulling the strings behind the scenes. They're 23rd in the moment in the FIFA rankings That was as of uh, October 22nd. But I don't think they'll have anything uh, to match Italy. I think Italy will be too organised, too constructed to get to, to get past them. So I do believe Italy will go through to the quarterfinals to take on Belgium. Uh, moving further down the bracket, we have the French World Cup winners up against the Danes, 1990. 
22 euro winners, of course. Now, this is uh, winners of Group F are taking on one of the third place teams. Uh, I believe out of Group A, perhaps. Anyway, the French come into this, uh, of course, the uh, World Cup champions, but uh, their ranking in the world is actually second uh, behind that of Belgium, taking on Denmark, of course, uh, who are currently ranked, according to my eyes, 13th uh, as of recording as well. Again, I don't expect the Danes to be too much a competition for the French. I think the French will have too much quality and I do expect them to oust them uh, on this one. So I do expect the La France uh, to go through to the quarterfinals to take on the, either the Croatians or the Polish, of course. Uh, now, these two sides, of course, Locking Horns, uh, uh, respected group is, what is it? We've got group, uh, runs up in Group D and runner group runs up in Group E, Locking Horns for a spot in the last eight. Uh, it's a difficult one, this one. They're two similar sort of styles. To, uh, I think either of those two nations could beat each other on any given day. Croatia currently ranked ninth in the world, uh, down one spot, of course. Uh, actually, well, once highest as third in the world. Taking the Poles, of course, they're currently ranked 18th. Of course, they're on the climb. They're on the climb up one spot from the last rankings, of course. But can they get over Croatia into the next round? This is difficult, this one. I did uh, chomp on this one for a little bit, but ultimately I came through with Croatia to set up a repeat of the World Cup final at the quarterfinal stage out in Euro 2020. So that's one side of the bracket. We'll take a look at the other side now. Spain up against Austria. Let's get into this bad boy now. Of course, on this other side of the bracket, we have uh, winners of Group E taking on their third place team, either A, B, C or D. But in my eyes, it's Austria. Austria coming into this ranked uh, in the world of 25th in the world at the moment. Spain looking very, very good. Looking look very, very composed and could be one of the nations that could go all the way. Currently ranked 6th in the world, but of course uh, an impressive display against the Germans has put them right on the, the forefront of everyone's attention. I do expect the Spain uh, to currently uh, go all at it and, and maybe just nick it. Uh, especially this one anyway. I do expect them to be to be there or thereabouts on this one. So a comfortable win, I believe, on this one for Spain uh, to get through to the quarterfinals to set up a possible little fruity one against either England or a repeat of that spanking against uh, Germany, of course. So here it is, folks. It is one for the neutrals, oh, and even one for the English and Germans. It's a, it's a, it's a Bobby Dazzler of a quarterfinal or a last 16 match. England up against Germany. England are coming into this. Were well, they fourth in the world? I think Germany around about 12th or something like that in the old world rankings. And it is out of uh, Euro 2020. Winner of Group uh, D up against the runner-up of Group F. Uh, locking horns once again. Uh, this is, of course, a repeat of the 1996 uh, a fiasco. There was one. There was some games earlier as well, 1990. Uh, of course, a bit, a bit of rivalry. And there'll be a lot on the line. And if it goes the way that it's going and it pans out like this, this will be an absolute treat uh, for both English and German fans uh, for bragging rights once again. Of course, England are looking good at the moment, uh, despite the, the grumps and groans of some English fans. But I think uh, this will be a very, very interesting counter uh, if it all pans out. Uh, but unfortunately, one of them, one of those nations are going to lose. And I think, to be honest with you, with my German hat on, I think England will crumble under the pressure of this one as Germany always rise to the top. You can't, ride, as, as a famous pundit once said, you can't ride off the Germans, and I do expect Germany to oust them uh, at the end of the day. May go to penalties, you just don't know. Uh, into the bottom half of this, this bracket now is the Netherlands up against the Swedes, of course, and this is, uh, what is it, winner of Group C taking on uh, winner of the third place team, uh, D, E, and F. Uh, so let's take a closer look. Sweden coming to this ranked currently uh, 19th in the world, uh, whereas the Dutchies are currently ranked, where are they? Actually 15th in the world. They have, again, they've not been in the past couple of uh, major championships, of course, so this is a chance for them to bounce back and bounce back accordingly. And I do expect them to be uh, there or thereabouts, especially to the quarterfinal stages. So I'm going to put them, uh, squeeze them through past Sweden. Uh, I think their, 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 their quality will rise uh, and I'll set up a nice little fruity encounter with either Switzerland or uh, Russia, of course. And I did say this at the start, so it's a nice passageway through to possibly Possibly the semi-finals, at least for Netherlands on this one. So the Swiss taking on the Russia in the final uh, last 16 match. Uh, Russia currently ranked uh, 34th in the world. They're not really playing competitive matches, of course, uh, heading into this. Of course, they had the World Cup themselves and they've been they've been duking it out in the, in the Nations League, just like everybody else. But they're trying to climb, reclimb those rankings uh, this time around. They're taking on the Swiss, who currently ranked 16th again. They're on the de decline. A uh, little bit a little bit higher than that earlier in the campaign. They were 15th a little bit uh, a little bit earlier in the month or earlier in the calendar year. Uh, but anyway, who's going to come out on top of this one? This one's tough again. Just like the Croatia Poland one, it could go either way, and unfortunately, I think one of these one of these nations is going home, and I think it will be the Swiss to go out. Russia will, of course, stick on to the next stage to set up these quarterfinals. So at this stage, we'll take a look at the odds. I'll tell you the odds for the Belgium. Are actually, your favourites at the moment, and you can get odds at five to one for them uh, to become champions. England are actually second favourites, around about six to one, eleven to two, depending on where you see. Uh, France are also up there as well, eleven to two as well. Uh, Germany fourth favourites, then Spain, of course, fifth favourites, and the Netherlands, Italy. Portugal, Croatia are there. Uh, I have Russia here in this stage, and they are actually long shots at 80 to 1. So they're the biggest underdogs uh, in the tournament so far. But let's move on to the quarterfinals then. Belgium taking on Italy, according to my eyes again. Uh, it's sort of attack against defence here, but which will rise to the top? Now, this is probably going to be a surprise uh, prediction for me, but I think I've gone with Italy to oust them. I think the defensive structure and their mentality will, will shock uh, the European world.
world of football uh, and get themselves through to the semi-finals to set up a potential crutch clash against Fre the French or the Croatians. Again, it's bigger than that game. It is, a, is, a, is a repeat of the World Cup, the 2018 World Cup. And of course, France came out of it last round. Can Croatia do the uh, get revenge on them? I don't think so. They've also played recently in the Old Nations League, I believe, uh, in their respective groups. So, But I do expect La France to once again sidestep Croatia and get themselves through to yet another major semi-final up against Italy, though. On the back end of the draw now, we take a look, we're looking at Spain up against Germany, of course. Germany getting past England to get this day. Spain, of course, uh, recently spanked Germany. And, I, and, I, and I, went, I did these predictions a couple of times before I settled on my opinion. Uh, and as much as I'd love to see Germany go out and win this one, I do expect Spain to come out on top. The cream will rise to the top. They looked good. They looked clinical. But maybe uh, if we go back to that, actually, it could be it could be the other way. It could, like, it, that could be the, the, the spanking Germany needed to, to readdress any long-lasting issues uh, with, uh, with with their team heading into this Euros. It was, of course, a monster game. It was a chance for them to go through to the knockout stages for the Nations League. But Spain will be there uh, to potentially win their first bit of silverware for a couple of seasons, a couple of years anyway. But anyway, I'm going to stick by it. Spain will go through. Germany will go home. But who will Spain take on in the semi-finals? Will it be the Dutchies? Will it be the Russians? Uh, I think that I think the Russians, the Russians are a, a decent team. Again, difficult to beat. And they could play very defensive football to grind out the results and maybe nick it with a 1-0 win or penalties. But I think ultimately the, the Dutchies will come out on this one uh, to set up a fruity last four, as you can see, the power four here. Italy against France, Spain against Netherlands. Whatever, whichever way it goes, it will set up a nice final uh, for us all to enjoy. Of course, classic nations in my eyes. Uh, they're all previous winners, I think. Maybe previous winners of the old Euros. I don't know. Uh, I think the Dutchies definitely won it. Spain won it. France won it. I think Italy must have won it. Um, let me have a little look here. Italy have won it back in 1968. They're long overdue. They're long overdue. Germany have won it multiple times. Spain have won it three times as well. The France have, uh, French have won it twice. And the Dutchies have won it once. So, of course, uh, it's not a new name on the trophy, but it will hopefully be a Bobby Dazzler at the semi-finals. And hopefully we'll have to see gold galore, action galore, and all that kind of stuff. Again, extensive coverage right here on the platform. So let's kick it off then. Italy gets semi uh, France in the semis. What's going to happen? Well, we'll get let's get into it then, of course. Uh, yeah, of course, French are looking good right now. Italy looking composed and restructured again, just like the Dutchies uh, missed out in the World Cup last time around. But I think they were organised and they don't want uh, to be left behind as world football progresses. And I do expect another sort of surprise here uh, to see the Italians squeezed by La France uh, to set up a nice little fruity fire for themselves. I think they're more, to, uh, of course, the French. They've got the attacking players. They've got some really world-class players in there. But maybe, just maybe, uh, the, 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 there's not uh, the fluidity as it once was in, in, in Camp La France. Uh, Italy have just grown slowly but surely uh, compose themselves and start to turn the corner and hopefully mentally for them uh, this could be maybe a, a dress rehearsal for a, maybe a World Cup push as well once again. I, on the flip side we have the Spain and the Spanish up against the Dutchies of course again the Dutchies uh, change of managerialship once again with uh, with Koeman leaving the Dutch national team to go and join Barcelona. Fair enough that's his dream job and all that kind of stuff. I thought it was the wrong decision. I thought the, the Dutchies under Koeman were a machine. So there's a lot of question marks still remaining over the Dutchies but I think their, their passage to the stage is, is good uh, and, I've got, and it's easy for them and it, it's kind of like England's passage to the World Cup semi-finals it was quite an easy passage uh, realistically but they got ousted when they were up against some real quality and this is going to be the same Spain are real quality and I do expect the Dutchies to lose this one uh, and they bow out to set up what will be a fruity fruity were Euro 2020 final Italy against Spain lock horns once again uh, so yeah for me uh, it's, it's the ideal ideal uh, ideal uh, uh, final of course uh, the attacking fluidity of Spain which we did see against Germany in the Nations League up against Italy who are defensive uh, orchestrated constructed well defended uh, and a big old unit to beat and I do expect this one to uh, to be a classic uh, I do expect Spain to be to be gunning forward but maybe just maybe it's, it, 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 it is Italy's year get those words out so I am ultimately putting my money uh, right here right now on Italy to oust uh, Spain and become European champions for the first time since 1968. And as you can see, the flipping trophy is rising behind me. Let's move out the bloody way. Get on it. Rise. Get it over there. That will be in the hands of Cellini or whoever is the Capitano these days for Italy. Uh, they will be there or thereabouts. Put your money where your mouth is. That's it. Italy, Euro 2020 champions. That's what I think will happen, of course. Uh, but it is my early door picks. Uh, and we will re revisit those as uh, as the games draw near and the, as the summer draws near. But that's what I think will happen. Of course, put your own picks in, in the old descri description down below in your comment section. And again, we have extensive coverage on the channel. We'll be having digicasters. So you can predict the whole Euros from group stages all the way through uh, to the final in one video. So make sure you check that bad boy. That'll be a hoot. And uh, then, of course, we have squad picks and all that kind of stuff. Football manager will do their picks as well. 
may do a football man as a simulation. I just don't know. But that's pretty much it, folks. That's all I've got for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that thumbs up. If you're new, bang your subscribe, of course. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related. Euro 2020 related. World football related. We're going to go here under one Ruski. If you want to go that extra mile, check out the link down below. Look to my other, uh, links to my other social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, and of course, Patreon if you want to support the channel in another way. That's the best place to do it. Until then, though, be safe out there. I'm looking forward to the Euros. Hopefully you are looking forward to the Euros, but we'll be back there whenever it comes around. But until then, stay safe, mask up, and I'll see you all on the other side.